Kandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. But before our story begins, we would like to ask a question. Do you shudder when you see the price tags on sheets and towels these days? Then those high prices are one reason for giving all your household linens White King Wash Day Care. White King has been a good washing machine soap, a good wash day soap for 30 years. Today, it is better than ever, actually improved in quality. You will like White King because it dissolves so quickly and completely in your wash water. Because it makes quantities of suds that eagerly wash off surface dirt and wash out hidden dirt. And White King washes so quickly and so gently it protects your household linens, keeps them new-looking longer. Just try White King. We know you will say, I love that soap. In Cairo, Frank Chandler discovers that Gordon Douglas, an agent of the malevolent Roxor, has returned from Istanbul to take over Roxor's sinister organization after Roxor's death in the fire in the native quarter. Learning of Douglas's obsession with black magic, Chandler, with Dorothy's help, leads Douglas to the ancient temple under the Sphinx. There, by his occult powers, Chandler forces Douglas to relive an event of 6,000 years ago. A few moments later, as Chandler and Dorothy watch, Douglas walks away into the darkness of the desert night. With a wild cry, he disappears from sight. It is two days later. Chandler and the regents have at last started on the long journey to Algiers, where they hope to discover the ancient ruin, long the prison of Robert Regent. The present scene takes place in a room in the governor's residence on the island of Malta. Chandu, the magician. But Chandler, if this is true, if this man Roxo is dead, our work's finished. Especially now that Douglas has given up. I'm sorry the other council members are gone, Blackwood. They were sorry to have missed you. But I'll send your news to them at once. No word yet about the location of Roxor's headquarters? Nothing definite. Here, have a look at this. It was decoded only a few minutes before you arrived. Hmm. Well, we'll very soon know whether Roxor is alive or dead. You said you found no actual proof of his death. No, everything was burnt out. Uh. Only the walls left standing. And Roxor had been tied in his chair. I don't see how he could have gotten out. It's amazing that, she, that he should have been in Cairo at all. Why should he have gone there? And for a final checkup on his Arab agents. He was just about ready for his big coup. Oh, thank heaven that's been stopped. Yes. And if he's dead, the trouble he stirred up all over the world will die out. Mm, oh. Well, that seems to be everything. Except that you haven't located region. What can you do about that, eh? Roxor himself told me Robert was being held in a ruin near Algiers. I hope we'll find him alive. We? Oh, oh, Regent's wife's with you, eh? Yes, and their two children. Ah. They're waiting for me in the garden now. This must be a dreadful ordeal for her. Oh, it is. But if I can find any sort of clue in Algiers, it'll soon be open. We're leaving by plane at three o'clock. Are you staying on? Only until tonight. As soon as it's dark, I'm going aboard my friend's yacht. So far, not a word leaked out about our conference. Good. No, there are my sister and the children over there with the fountain. I'll say goodbye for now, Blackman. I'd like to meet your sister, if I may. I knew Regent, you know. Mm, certainly. Yeah, I'd uh, best introduce you by another name. We might be overheard. Very well. <laughs> I'll be Smith. <laughs> Good old John Smith. Eh? <laughs> Not one of your more imaginative days, is it? <laughs> Here he is. We're all ready, Uncle Frank. Good. And Dorothy, may I introduce a very old friend, Mr. Smith. How do you do? How do you do? Hand her daughter, Betty. How do you do? And this is Bob. How do you do, sir? How do you do? 
I knew your husband quite well at one time, Mrs. Regent. Oh, did you? I suppose Frank's told you we found he's alive. Yes, and I'm so glad. He's much too important to Sanders to be lost to the world. Oh, you make it seem so real. You know, you're the first person we've met who seemed to believe we'll find him. Oh, I'm quite sure you will. The, the Bob, you look rather odd. What is it? A smudge on my nose or something? Oh, oh no, sir. I, well, I was thinking you look like somebody I've seen. Oh. Or maybe it was a picture in the paper. Oh, I'm sure you're quite mistaken. I, I have a great aversion to post photographs of myself, uh, I'm sorry. I must go back inside. I've come. Uh, Mrs. Regent, uh, I hope we shall meet again under happier circumstances. Thank you. I hope so, too. Goodbye, Smith. I'll write you, Chandler. Good hunting. Thank you. His face sure looks familiar. Uncle Frank, uh, is he... Uh, didn't you say you were ready to go sightseeing? We are. We have a carriage and a driver already just outside the gate. See? Oh, yes. Of course, malt is nothing like it was before the bombings, but... Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, yes, let's. I sure wish I could remember where I've seen Mr. Smith. Oh, Lord! I wonder where all those people are going. Looks like a religious procession. Aren't the banners beautiful? That church is built over a famous grotto. St. Paul is supposed to have stayed there when he was shipwrecked on Malta. Honestly? Oh, could we go and see it? When the service is over, Betty. We'll stop here, driver. Yes, Mr. Hurry up! Well, let me help you down, Doc. Oh, thanks. Oh, what women did in the 80s with five petticoats to catch on carriage steps, I'll <laughs> yeah, never yeah. know. I bet we'll be wearing that many by next year, Mother. Well, don't expect me to hang around dragging you out of cars if you are. <laughs> don't worry. Wait here for us, darling. Uncle Frank, you know what I'd like to see? What, Mom? Those underground caves you told us about. That nobody knows who dug them or what they used them for or anything. Oh, the catacombs. Well, the entrance is right over there, you know, they saved the lives of thousands of people during the bombings. Ready-made shelters. Oh, let's go over and see them. All right. But we um, can't go in without a guide. You mean it's like a museum? No, Betty. I mean the caves extend underground for about 15 miles, with all sorts of galleries and corridors turning off the main ones. <gasps> oh. People get lost in there. Can't find their way out. Oh, what happens to them? They just don't come out. A school teacher and a whole party of students were lost once, about 50 years ago. A famous local story. Good heavens. Oh, well, there are some women going in now. And a man with a lantern. Mm, that's the guide. Well, I certainly don't care about seeing catacombs. Oh, Mom. Well, there's something you might look at while we're waiting to get into the church, Don. What? Men making lace. Oh, yes, I would. Mm, come along, then. Poor things. They can't sell much of it now with so few travelers these days. Oh, listen, Bats. Let you and I go in and look around. In the cave? Sure. Oh, golly, Bob, I don't Do you think... want to fiddle around looking at lace for Pete's sake? We'll come right out. Uh, oh, you're scared. I am not. Well, then, come on. We'll be back before Mom even misses us. Oh, no, hurry up, then. Hey, this is something, isn't it? I don't see those people. Where could they be so soon? Oh, they probably turned the corner. Oh, what's that? Oh, a whole flock of lanterns on the floor. Wait till I light one. Oh. Bob, I don't think we ought to take it. Well, I'll put it right back. Now. Oh, I don't like it in here. Let's go back. We might get lost. Well, how can we with those people and a guy just ahead of us? Well, where are they? Hold the lantern up high, Bob. Oh, there's nothing to see anyway. Just rock. Hey, Let's look, go. it turns off here. Oh, don't go that way, Bob. You know what Uncle Frank said. There's a light down there. Oh, yes, I see it. I wonder if people used to have secret meetings down here 2,000 years ago. Oh, they must have been some meetings to need all of this room. Yeah. Hey. Hey, this is the end of the line. That light must have been a reflection of our lantern. See how shiny the stone is here? Yeah. That square platform looks like the old pagan altar we saw in the pyramid, remember? Oh, come on, Bob. Let's go back the way we came. Oh, it's only a few feet. 
see? Here's where we turned off. I don't think so. That big pillar wasn't there, was it? Oh, I... I guess not. Oh, where could those people get to so fast? We were right behind them. <laughs> we should have dropped breadcrumbs behind us. Like Hansel and Gretel. Look, you wait here. I'll go down that way and see if I can see the entrance. No, I'm coming with you. You'll have to stay here so we'll know this place at least. Are you going to take the lantern? Well, I'll have to. But I won't turn any corners. You can see me all the time. Oh, Bob, hurry up. Bob, I can't see the lantern. Where are you? Right here. I just looked around the corner. Well, was it the way we came in? Did you see those people? No. I guess we got turned around somehow. Oh, we can't be far from the entrance. What are we going to do? I'm sorry I got you into this, Bets. I didn't have to come, did I? Poor mother. She'll think we're lost. Yeah. You mean we really are? Well, we'll be okay as long as the lantern holds out. Well, let's keep on looking. We'll never find our way out in the dark. Uncle Frank will sure tell me off. And I've got it coming. Well, let's try it down this way. Didn't you find a guide, Frank? They're all in the church. It's some kind of special ceremony. Well, it might last for hours. You can't just stand here. Let's go inside and call the children. Well, that's no good, Dot. If they'd gone around a few corners, they wouldn't hear us. Oh, but we'll have to do something. I'm going to. Come over here. You sit down on the bench, Dot. No. I'm going to sit keep... Sit down, I... Dot. Look into the crystal. The crystal? Why, where did you get it? Look, Dot. I don't see anything. What's the matter? Dorothy, don't you remember what the yogi said the very first time you ever looked into the crystal at home? Oh, don't talk to me about the yogi, Frank. Do something about Betty and Bob. He said in fear is the greatest peril. Look again, Dot. Look. I am looking. There's nothing in the crystal at all. Because you're afraid. Oh, I can't help it. Bob and Betty wandering around in that awful place in the dark. Unless you can free your mind from fear, Dorothy, there's nothing in the world I can do. But I can't. And now, before we say goodnight for Chandu the Magician, we have a bedtime story for all you mothers of small babies. A true story about White King granulated soap. We do not have to tell you that babies require lots of diapers and that diapers require lots of washing in rich, gentle soap suds. That means that mothers require lots of White King because the very same soap you like so much for washing clothes and dishes is safe for washing baby diapers, too. In fact, it is so very safe that many maternity wards of hospitals suggest that mothers use White King for washing baby clothes. White King suds are gentle suds. They wash baby clothes sweet and clean, and then all the soil and all the soap suds are rinsed away freely and completely in your rinse water. Yes, just as surely as you love your baby, you will love White King for washing baby clothes. Chandu the Magician is based on the original radio drama created by Harry A. Earnshaw and is written by Vera Oldham. Dorothy Regent is played by Irene Tedrow. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.